Hello, this is Bishop, and this is a video rundown of the changes that have been made in V9 to the Tesla UI for the Model S and the Model X, because they basically have the same UI. I apologize in advance for the handheld camera. I did my best to try to figure out a way that I could mount this camera vertically so you could see the entire screen and still have my hands free, but I couldn't figure out a, an option that really got the angle that I needed, even with all my assorted mounting arms and, and other hardware. So um, I'm just gonna try to hold it as steady as possible with my other hand as we go through what has changed in the UI. So obviously the first big thing you'll notice is there is no UI bar across the top. Touching up here, does nothing. Everything has basically been moved down to the bottom. So the, the UI in general still permits you to multitask in a similar way to how you used to be able to do it before. The biggest difference now though is you can multitask as long as one of the apps that you're multitasking is the navigation. Navigation has essentially become the background screen for all of the other applications. Uh, the first thing that we'll take a look at is the control slash settings section. So one thing that's changed here is they've actually consolidated controls and settings into one set of menus. Essentially, this is something I don't have a philosophical problem with. I always thought it was kind of arbitrary, the distinction between what qualified as a control and what qualified as a setting. So now everything has been collapsed into here. So they've added this quick control setting, which does occupy the entire screen, but it gives you access to the things that you're most likely to want to have access to um, on a regular basis. Interesting. Okay, so um, oh, that's interesting. So some of this stuff I'm actually seeing for the first time. So it appears that I was a little concerned there because I didn't see a button to open it all the way. It appears that you can actually, oh, that's cool. You can actually just drag the sunroof on the car icon. Okay, I like that. That's neat. Locking and unlocking the doors. Same as hitting it up here. Okay, that's fine. Charge port open. Oh, wow, that just put me into uh, easy entry too. Move the seat back. Let me see if I can, uh, let's fix that. It's a little uncomfortable. There we go. We should close that. There we go. Uh, rear trunk and then display brightness. That's actually handy that they put that someplace so you can more easily access it. Suspension controls look fundamentally pretty much the same. Lights look fundamentally pretty much the same, except they've they've changed a lot of the toggles to these much smaller um, on-off toggle switches. So interesting. So ambient lights and dome lights are no longer accessible from what the equivalent of the quick controls that you had in the previous UI was. So you actually do have to go to lights over here. Let's see if there's anything. No, I don't think there is. Hmm. Okay, interesting. So driving settings, those look pretty similar to what they looked like before. Um, autopilot. So I'm not, this is not a video on the new autopilot capabilities or anything along those lines. This is just specifically to cover the MCU stuff because I can't do a lot of this stuff while I'm driving. I will do another video on that um, shortly. One of the new features that they've added is the obstacle aware acceleration. They also do mention specifically in the release notes um, the new highway navigation feature. However, um, it's even though it's mentioned in the release notes, it's called out in the release notes as a confirm, not as an automatic. So the whole like, you know, light, normal, or Mad Max setting, that doesn't appear to be what this version was supposed to have included, uh, which is consistent with what I've been seeing on the forums. But the setting that they call out specifically is obviously absent here because they, they pulled that feature prior to this release so they could get this release out. Um, I will say that this release is probably the most significant release in terms of maybe Tesla's history that they've done in terms of total number of things that they have changed because there's there's a lot of little stuff and we'll get into that also some of it in this video and some of the next video. Um, so the, the vehicle features, these all look pretty much the same. Again, they've moved it to this vertical list of small toggles. I like this layout a little bit better than the old way. Display, so this is interesting because they've actually collapsed the display settings that they had along with the units and measure settings. So there's no longer a separate section for units and measure. I have no problem with that. I think that makes sense. Um, trip meter looks pretty much the same. Navigation. Um, looks all the same, except they've added the feature specifically for the HOV lanes. Now, one thing you also notice is um, at the top of the settings menu that you had in the previous UI, there was an applications settings, which allowed you to change settings for calendar was one of the applications, and then navigation. This was 
for a feature that they were planning on doing a long time ago where you're going to be able to plug in applications into your car that they never ended up doing. They were going to let people develop their own apps. They were going to, they had like a whole bunch of plans for how they're going to do it. So they had left it open with like an extensible UI where you basically you could add more applications at some point in time and you'd be able to set them um, in there. But for as long as I've owned my two cars that I've had, um, the only two applications that have ever been in the app setting were just calendar and navigation. So I think they realized that that's kind of silly and they basically gotten rid of that and now navigation is just part of the core UI. Uh, safety and security. So these features all look pretty much the same, consistent with the most recent versions. And then service, yeah. So wiper, service mode, um, reset the tire pressure sensors, uh, factory reset of the car. Yep, that's all the same. But yeah, all of it's been collapsed into this single UI. So in terms of what I like about this, um, I think the new layout is probably better. Um, there are a lot of little things I'm going to have to get used to. I think things generally are going to be easier to find because you don't have to dig through quite so many submenus as you did before. Um, you know, you don't have to memorize like which item was a control, which item was a setting. Um, you don't have to go into the application settings and then navigation to go, you know, you basically just from the controls here, just go straight to the navigation settings, units and measures being broken out as a separate screen. That was probably kind of silly. Um, what I'm ambivalent about, I'm not certain that I like the whole Chrome that they use here. Chrome referring to the, um, the general look and feel of the UI, like all of the, the elements, the buttons and whatnot. Um, I think it's very minimalist. I like graphics. I'm not a UI designer by trade. I do work in IT and with, uh, custom software development, but, um, Designing a clean UI is not something that, like, there are guys who basically specialize in doing just nothing but that, because there's a, there's a lot to it. Um, you know, I think it's fine. I think I'll get used to it. It's not, it's not my favorite look. I don't think it's significantly worse than the look that we had before, but it just, you know, I feel like they could have done a little bit more with it. Maybe even just a little bit of color. Um, so now, if we take a look at the bottom, we've got our audio controls. So basically the way that everything works is ev the navigation is the background for all of the other applications. And then it's just a question of what are the applications that you are then launching on top of the navigation? So there's some pros and cons to that. So we'll start with the audio. So the audio is the only one that's not on the quick launch bar, presumably because they expect that you're going to want to go back to it pr relatively quickly and, and relatively often. So this is interesting. Now, every single one of these applications has this drag bar. So to dismiss the application, you basically just drag it off the screen completely and you've got full screen navigation again. Um, audio in particular has multiple places where you can leave the drag bar and that gives you basically like what your what your collapsed view is going to look like. So this is as large as you can get it. Uh, and it has all the same options that we basically had before. Everything's been laid out a little bit differently. Um, one thing also worth pointing out, my car has MCU version 1. So this is a Tegra-based MCU instead of the Intel-based MCU. One of the things that was mentioned on Electrek was um, you were not going to have the ability, or they, they didn't explicitly call it out. It was more just a question of these are the features you have in MCU 2, these are the features you have in MCU 1. One of the features that was listed for MCU 2 was the ability to um, directly tune radio stations but it was not listed for MCU-1. I have an MCU-1 car, and yeah, apparently this feature's here. So that's cool. That was in addition to... So that feature and then the dash cam capability that's only on Autopilot 2.5 cars um, were the two features that I was not going to get as part of this suite. But this one appears to work just fine. So... Yeah, I don't know why. Maybe that was just a notes oversight in what you know Tesla had put out. Um, I can't think of any technical reason why you probably wouldn't be able to just do this on a Tegra chipset. I mean, it's you know Tegra, it's Tegra chipsets are not that fast compared to Intel's, but um, that doesn't seem like a particularly complicated or difficult feature. So um, you can drag it down to sort of this half view where you get like half the uh, roughly half of the navigation a little bit more, and then you can also drop it down to sort of like this little tiny dock view where basically the navigation is taking up most of the screen. As soon as you launch any other application, you lose the application that you were just looking at. So this is where we are maybe getting into... That's interesting. I wonder what that is. Um, this is where we're getting into features that... 
we are potentially losing as part of this update. So in the old version, you had the ability to take any application, display it at half screen, some applications could be displayed full screen, and then the option of picking which side of the screen you wanted to display the application on, so you could pick which two applications you were looking at. In the new version, we no longer have that capability. The, you do have the ability to multitask as long as one of the applications you are multitasking is the navigation. Now, is that a big deal? Um, I think in practical terms, probably not, but it is certainly worth pointing out because it is a feature that we have essentially lost. You can no longer, for example, have the rear-facing camera on all the time and then also be playing with, whoops, so let's say, yep, rear-facing camera, nope, and then audio controls, because as soon as I bring up the audio controls, it dismisses the rear-facing camera. Um, I don't know how big a deal this is going to be. Personally, um, the reason that this annoyed me a bit is because I, when I'm driving normally, I actually drive with the rear-facing camera on all the time. Um, it's a very rare circumstance that I will not have it on when I'm driving. I also like to keep the rear-facing camera view at the top of the screen rather than the bottom because I want to keep it in my sight line as much as possible. I don't want to have to look that far away from the windshield to be able to glance and see what's directly behind me. Um, it could be argued that since they have significantly enhanced the blind spot detection, now given the car's uh, instrument cluster display of view 360 degrees around the car, that this is not that big a deal anymore because that's the main reason people would use this camera like this. I, yeah, I, I understand that logic, but personally, I would like to see the ability to multitask applications again, like for example, bring up the camera and maybe the energy display and just drag one to the top. Like that seems like a relatively easy feature. You know, I think probably a Tegra chipset would be able to handle that. I mean, in, under the new UI, everything seems like it's actually moving pretty quickly. Um, so the UI seems generally faster, more responsive than the old UI, even on my MCU one car. But yeah, that's, that is one thing that we have lost. So we have our calendar display. We have our energy display. That basically looks the same. It's got all the same options. Things have just moved around slightly. We have our web browser. Web browsers, even on graphical pages like this, web browsers are moving pretty quick. So I like that. It seems like it's even quicker than before. We have our camera view, slightly smaller than what it looked like before, um, but still pretty functional. I just wish we could have, you know, he'll even let me like try to move it a little bit. And then it's like, no, we're not doing that. Um, it's a little bit smaller, but it's still, I mean, this is a pretty functional view. I don't really have too much of an issue as long as I have the ability to leave this up. If they ever take that away, I'm not going to be thrilled. The call screen. Um, so one difference is the call screen did have the ability to go full screen in the old version. Uh, now it only will operate at half screen. Um, in fact, all of the applications, oh, that was interesting. I'm not sure how I did that. So all of the applications basically now appear to be half screen or what, however much they take up. Um, with the exception of the audio application, the audio application is the only one that seems to have multiple positions that I've noticed. So yeah, so that's the new UI. I wonder what this is. Is this a stoplight display? I don't know what this icon is. If anybody knows, feel free to, to point that out in the comments because I certainly don't recognize that. Um, so one thing that I did notice on the audio display is you now have, I don't know if we had this before, and somebody feel free to point out to me if we did, but you now have a recents um, option, and one of the things that I saw in the recents option, that's a folder on my USB drive. I, If this was in the UI before, I never noticed this, or it was buried someplace where it was a little bit less obvious, but I never had the ability to return to a folder that I was listening to on my USB drive. Uh, except by navigating to it manually. So the fact that I can just jump right back to it, that's actually pretty cool. And I definitely like that, being able to just um, jump back. Maybe it was on the old display, but it was like scrolled way, way off to the side is entirely possible. Uh, if we go into the equalizer settings, we've got our balance. So this has been split out a little bit. And now we've got the new explicit content option. Um, that I believe we didn't have an option for before. They also moved the DJ commentary into over here and allow mobile control since now you can control, um, you can do like track forward, volume up, volume down, start, stop, uh, pause, etc. Um, but it, using the mobile app, which, you know, I think it's kind of handy. Um, I don't know really how much use anybody's going to get out of that because you still have to have the app. You still have to be connected to the Tesla account. Um, you know, it's like if my wife's in the car, 
she's probably going to be sitting in the passenger seat anyway. So I don't know that it's that much more convenient to bust out her phone to, to control these options. Um, yeah, so that pretty much covers most of it. The explicit content option, I like that. I'm a parent. Um, I'm also an adult, so I don't mind explicit content. But um, I would like to be able to filter out explicit content. But I'll have this. I have the same complaint about um, Slacker as I do about Pandora, and that is, if I want explicit, if I if I want to filter explicit content, I would really like to be able to do it on a per station basis, as opposed to it being like an all or nothing, scorched earth sort of option. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe I'll turn this on and then set up like a Wu-Tang Clan and a NWA station and see if the thing just explodes, but we'll, we'll see about that. So I think, yeah, so then any music just brings up the search that we had before. And yeah, for the, for the most part, um, that pretty much encompasses all the changes. I mean, there aren't that many huge feature differences. We do have several, several that are pertaining to the mobile app, which obviously is a little bit harder for me to show off, especially while I'm filming with my phone. Um, but yeah, overall, I think the UI is an improvement, um, but I think it could be improved further still. And one of the ways that it could be improved is by giving us back access to some of the features that we had before, such as the ability to put applications on the top half of the screen that are not necessarily the navigation application. Um, I'll post up another video later today that's going to be a moving vi uh, a video while driving. That one's going to have some really interesting stuff in it because just from the two drives that I've done with version 9 so far, a lot of stuff has changed, um, a very significant amount. And not all of it is stuff that is necessarily in the release notes or that's being actively talked about in the forums. So um, we'll post that video up later today, and thanks for watching.